are grouped together, that's called a string. Well, you initiated it, you started it somewhere, so now we have to end it somewhere, deleting the extra double quote, and you put an X or a semicolon, okay? Now there's one more thing we have to do, and what we want to do is we want to say return zero. What this does is it tells the function, hey, okay, I'm all set, I ran this, this is what you told me to do, here's the endpoint, okay? There obviously has to be an endpoint. A program has a start and an end, and it runs through um, C++, it runs through top to bottom, so it, so it goes through here, I just repeated myself, but it goes through here and it says, okay, I wanna do this, oh, I got to the end point. It's never gonna end first and then it's not gonna ever move up, up bottom to the, the top. It's always gonna go top to bottom. So this return zero, the reason why you return zero is because basically zero means there are no errors when the program was ended. Sometimes you'll get error codes in you know, software, maybe you have an error code in Microsoft Word, whatever the case is, and you'll have a whole bunch of weird numbers and decimals. Well, if that was zero, that would mean, well, you just hit X on the program. When you hit X on any program, typically it's just you exit with zero. So, and that just says that it exited properly, everything ran through, there were no errors. Now, later on, you'll have error checks inside your code. You'll have like right here, you'll have error checks. Now this isn't how you, this isn't the syntax, this isn't how you code it, but basically you'll have error checks. And if if you found an error, you'll end the program prematurely and it won't even get to this return zero, it'll end somewhere else. So this just, like once again, this just tells the program that it ended, no, no big deal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here and click on this little uh, gear with the play button. And what that does is it compiles it and then it opens up the file. So compile and run. And it opens up right here, and you see right here, hello world. Now on Windows it'll look a little bit different. It won't have this last log online, and it won't have the absolute paths, and it won't have all of that. It'll just have hello world, and then down below it'll say process ended with zero, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but you know what? Hello world, we set on the screen, C output. So we wanted to output the hello world and that's sent into the output, which is the screen, <clears throat> and in turn, that's outputted on the screen. Now, let me open this back up really quick. You see how this path is started immediately after? Well, it, it took up the same line. Well, I wanna say, hey, everything else, you need to move down a line. You need to you know, leave the rest of the space for me. You need to get your own space. So what we can do is we can add another insertion operator, and you can add as many of these as you want, as long as you have statements stuff inside these. So we're going to add another insertion operator because basically what it'll do is it'll send everything into C out now. This does read left to right um, so that's that's no big deal. So we, we want to do end L. End L means end the line. Okay, end L. You'll just get used to it. It'll be something second nature eventually. Just bear with me for now. So end line. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit compile and run and ta-da, okay, so you see hello world, and then now it skipped a line, everything else started on its own line, it's on its own seat in the bus, you don't have to cram three people in a seat, etc. So, you know what, we'll say we want to space it out one more time. Well, I said you can add as many um, things as you want, as many uh, insertion operators as you want, so we'll add another NL. Now, you cannot put them right next to each other, it'll actually complain at you. It'll say ex expected semicolon before end L. Basically, the end L, that statement right there, is complete. You know, this, this command is complete. Well, why do you have two commands next to each other? Well, we need to separate the commands and say, okay, do this command, and then do this one right after. So now, what this will do is it'll, basically this is like a carriage return on a typewriter. You hit enter, and it goes down to the next line and it slides all the way to the left. That's what the end L does. So we have two of them, so it's gonna go down to the next line and then it's gonna skip a line, so it'll kinda of be like a double space. Let's go ahead and build it and run again, and you see how there's this extra space in here now. You know what? Hmm, this gets me to thinking. What if we add in end L at the beginning of the text? So what we'll do is we'll do end L, and then you have to add in the insertion operator again and because this is a command and then this is a command even though this doesn't really look like a command it's just saying here's a whole bunch of text 
And then here's, what do you want to do with the text? Well, we're gonna send it to CL. This is its own command. It's, it's different. So, you know what, let's compile and run it again. And we see how there's a nice space above that. Okay, so for one more, just so you guys really get the hang of this, let's add in insertion operators and another end L. As long as there's insertion operators in between everything, you're good. Let's add one at the end as well. So now this time we should have two spaces ahead, hello world, print it on its own line, and then we'll have the rest of this line is taking up, taken up, the whole next line is taken up, and then the entire next line is taking up, taken up. So let's start it again. Okay, so we have two spaces and then two spaces. Now the reason why you have two spaces ahead and not three below is because there's nothing on the first line, so it automatically goes to the second line. Well, there's nothing on the second line, so it automatically goes to the third line. This is the third line. Okay, well, you have hello world, so there's something on that third line. What endl does is it finishes, what it does is it takes up all of this extra space. This window is 80 characters wide, so what it does is one, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, including the space, 11 characters. This endl um, substitutes for 69 characters. So basically what it'll do is it completes the rest of the line and then carriage returns down. And then this second end, or this, yeah, the second end L over here, what it does is it fills up this line, the rest of this line. Well, since there's nothing on it, it takes up a whole line. And then this last one takes up the, the line, okay? So I think you guys understand it. Just remember the IO stream that contains, if you didn't have IO stream, Actually, you know what, really quick, I'll take it out just to show you. I took it out, and now let me try compiling it. Basically, it's saying C out was not declared in this scope. That just means, that's a fancy way of saying, what the heck is C out? I have no idea. It's kind of like when we took out the double quotes on hello world, and it was trying to treat hello as a variable or a command. Well, that's what it's trying to do with C out. It has no idea what C out is, so we need to tell it, hey, C out is actually something it makes sense it comes in this io stream library and once again you can have different libraries to do different things using namespace std that just prevents you from having to write std c out also ndl is also part of that standard namespace you'd also have to do std you know what just to take this out and show you really quick i know this tutorial is getting a little long and hopefully it's not getting too bad let me just copy this, copy, copy, copy. Okay, so all of the C out and, and then the end L both contain the STD. So we, this is if you don't include that using namespace STD. So let's compile and run it. And da da, we got the same exact thing. For reality check, let me take out the STD on the end L and the C out. Let me compile this. And it's saying C out was not declared in the scope. Yeah, we've included this include IO stream, but it still has no idea what namespace that C out is coming from. So we have to put using namespace std and we can compile it and run. Now, you can still leave the std, and that's what I did just now. Basically, a shortcut instead of hitting this button, you can hit F9. So if you see this window come up really quick, it's because I hit F9. It's Probably going to be a bad habit in tutorials. I should actually click the button, but that using namespace std it just makes it quicker and it makes um, your program less clutter. Okay, so and just a, a side note, using namespace std that's typically typically until you get into more advanced programming, you're never going to use namespace something else. It's always going to be std. And that's only for these main commands. When you have other include libraries, you know, you'll have include blah, 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 blah. You're not going to have to have using namespace std for each one. This is just for this main IO stream, just so it knows. But if you have any questions, just um, leave me a comment. And I hope this tutorial wasn't too confusing. I tried to break it down and explain it in multiple different angles, from different angles. And I look forward to, uh, well, hopefully um, you watch the rest of my tutorial videos and gain something out of these. Thanks a lot.